we go. Good afternoon, everybody. <sighs> what what a uh, what a windy, blustery day it is here in Melbourne. Um, welcome, welcome. I'm sorry that was I hadn't forgotten you. I did have you on a little a little flashback screen just for a couple of minutes. It, what happened this morning? It, you try not to think the world has ended because Facebook has gone down. It's like <gasps> if Facebook goes down, what help? What hope is there for the rest of us? So, but they're all back, and then my phone decided, no, no, it, it's still not here. <laughs> so anyway, good afternoon. Who is here? I'll have a. You know what I found? Look, I found my stand that we made earlier in the year with uh, a large amount of rice in it so I can sit my phone on it again today I've completely forgotten about it and good afternoon Nancy Kathy oh my goodness you're all here Louise uh, how are you so Kathy Ahern and Kathy Douglas are in the building so is Carol and Marie Noel hello Deb's in the building Yvonne's here what do you mean you can't see me yes she can see me oh that was before I changed over yeah, no, that was on purpose, I promise. Judith, good afternoon. What is a chunk? Fellow junk? What's a junkie? Oh, Felicity, I don't know what you mean, but you'll have to explain yourself. Um, good afternoon, Janet, Denise, Yvonne, Melissa, Karen, Jenny. Uh, Steve will be swinging by Scott Street this afternoon, but you're not there anymore. Uh, doing a delivery for Kay. Um... Jenny and I used to live in the same street. We're old neighbours, neighbours, neighbours. Maureen is here. Oh, Karen and Pat and Margaret and everyone. Val. <gasps> Val, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. New project from Val and I coming up very, very soon. It's kind of her idea. It kind of is. Uh, Anne is here. Fiona, good afternoon. So there's an order there for you. All right, now no no mucking around. Oh, so Joan, yeah, blowing an absolute gale. It's actually coming from. Oh, I don't know. Is that north east east? So it's up the other end of the house. If we were up the other end of the house, you'd hear the palm trees at the front. No, we do not have a resort. The palm tree at the front and everything blowing, blowing, blowing. Oh, hello, Jenny. Michelle's here. Another piece of your jigsaw puzzle is here for you. Just waiting on two more. Um, well, there could be guys here, Cindy. There could. Uh, I know a couple that might rock in. Max, Peter, a few might rock in this afternoon. We will wait and see. Oh, yes, Flick, the stock standard. I want to, This is up for a reason. I will tell you in a minute. Oh, Lise, how are things in NT? Are you all good in Alice Springs? I love the Alice. Anything that re is warm weather. Did, is anyone else in Melbourne here and literally could have laid down and made a snow angel yesterday in the hail? Incredible. It was it was full on. Tina, how are things with you in Newcastle today? Marilyn, good afternoon. Looking like Friday delivery to Lee's Marilyn. Um, hello, Wendy. Oh, I'm, I could keep going. We're just, um, we just... I'll have a chat with you later on or we'll just be here all day. Oh! Margaret Dwen is in the building. Um, I know, actually, seeing this weather, I'm going to look for Louise to see if she pops up this afternoon. Uh, yes, yeah, Sharon, it was full on. Um, no, no, Yvonne, you didn't get it in the western suburbs because Steve didn't get it at his place either, and he was a bit miffed. It, it, was, it was incredible. Louise might pop up. Greetings in LA, Sue. Greetings. How are you? Uh, it m may pop up because she's supposed to be teeing off this afternoon. Uh, and I'm looking at the weather going, oh, I don't think so. I don't think she will be. Because uh, Louise grabbed the last, and I don't think she'd mind me telling you, the one, the only, the last Benina 720 in Australia yesterday. We just got her order in after our special show uh, on Saturday. Now, the reason I'm making that a very public thing for her is she's the first person that I have sold two bananas to. Good afternoon, Moira and Deb. 
Uh, is it just me or is everyone else getting an interrupted signal? I think, I think we're all good at this end. I haven't got any flashing lights or bells or whistles, but with this weather, wouldn't be surprised. So uh, we'll see how we go. Good afternoon, Helen. Lovely to see you. Oh, you've got interrupted too. Hang on, let me, I'll go check with the team. Um, but Louise is the first person I've sold two machines to. And she would like to sell the first one. And have I got an interrupted signal? No? Then why are you here? You're just looking? You're not coming in front of the camera in that, in that hoodie, are you? No? Nothing's flashing at my end. Anyway. I'll keep talking. Oh, Judy's is interrupted too. Well, you know what happened this morning is that Facebook was down for a fair while. So it could just be a little bit of a glitch. So we might persevere for a minute. What you Can you see it on yours, Rob, outside or not? Yeah. Hang on a minute, girls. It's okay outside. It's okay? Oh, so it's all right on all our uh, computers. What? Don't wiggle that. That's the big one. We uh, we might leave it. We might just leave it for a minute because some girls are fine and some girls aren't. So we might just give it a minute. Just give it a minute. See if you can get out the door again without being seen. Did, yes, yeah, so, uh, where was I? I was interrupted. We were so interrupted. Uh, Louise would like to sell her first machine, and the only reason she is upgrading, she would like the wider throat on her machine, like Vels, like Margaret's, like everyone else. So, she has a 535 for sale. Now, if you are interested in a magnificently maintained three-year-old machine, just, just send me a little email, info at Chandler's Cottage. We don't usually do, uh, thank you everyone, we, we'll persevere then, we'll see how we go. Um, we don't usually do trade-ins, and this is not a trade-in. This is Louise wanting to sell her machine, and because it is such a stunning machine, um, I said I would mention it. So it's a 535. Have a look at them, have a look at them on the web, on the Benina website. If you, it's uh, the size of a 570 but only with the same 5.5 um, wide feed dock. So it's like a slightly bigger 475. Gorgeous machine. Have a look. Just, just have a look if you are interested and I can pass on your details. Good afternoon, Josie. Good afternoon, Deb. Uh, Alyssa is here as well. All good, Cindy. Right. <laughs> Melissa says, I can vouch for the condition of her machine. Yes, she has looked after it brilliantly. You know what? You might even have to beat me to it. I, I'm, I'm feeling the love, but um, I think I have enough machines, don't you? I do. Okay. There is a lot of you here today that, you know, I get freaked out when there's a lot of you here, but the little signs that I showed you, oh, do you want to just look? Look, this was just, it's a little trip down memory lane. I found them in the hall cupboard. These are from when we first started our business at home in Bow Morris. At our, so this was uh, in Scott Street, Bow Morris. We ran our business from our home. Jenny, who's watching, knows all about this. So we had this one on the front picket gate. And then you had the one that said walk around the veranda. So you walked, whoop, walk around the veranda, past the lounge room, and then you went in the kitchen door, which said, please come in. My Auntie Ruth uh, hand paint painted these for me. So they're very, I don't know, they're just a bit of chipboard, but they've got a bit sentimental and they're well and truly loved. So we might need to um, give them a little bit of a bit of a spruce up. And yeah, we're all a little bit Christmassy today. But we're gearing up. Today's a bit of a gear up day, to be honest, for Friday. Um, all good plans never quite work, do they? As <laughs> Susan Sue's remembers too. They never quite work, do they? Um, so, yeah, I've had since when? Saturday with the Benina Show. We changed over email addresses, so that got a bit in the way. And you know what happens? I go, yeah, yeah, I'm going to spend three days doing all this stuff before the next show. Every now and then I have to stop and go, if I don't do this 
today, it won't be ready for a month's time or it won't be ready in two weeks time. So yesterday I spent working on the block of the month, applique sample up blocks, because if I didn't get them designed up yesterday, they don't get sewn for the next week. They don't go to cast to edit the patterns. We don't get the photography done and it's not ready to go out to the girls for the next month. So every now and then I go, no, we've just got to stop. I stop and I've got to do this. So probably everything I promised you is now Friday. Um, one of the uh, castle ceiling table runners that is done, it's next door on the Q20 and I'm not, I'm not pulling it off. I will show it to you on Friday. But I had a chat with Steve this morning. What we would love you to do, good Sharon, I'm pleased to hear that because I'm halfway through the draft for Cass to put out for about the Christmas decorations and I've changed my mind about something to the benefit of everyone. So I'll tell you about that in a tip. Um, had a chat with Steve because we've got today's show and we've got Fridays and because we haven't got everything up I wanted to for today and what I'm going to do for this week, we're pretty sure we can cover everyone. If you see something that you like today, pop it in your cart. There's not a lot tag, but you'll find them. Pop it in your cart, leave it there for me. Leave it until Friday. So you can start your cart today and then please give me till Friday because I'm going to keep putting things up for the next couple of days with Steve that are for Friday's show as well. So you can pop in what's there today and then you can, you know, add in as we go through. If there is limited stock of something, I will tell you. If we, um, I may have mucked that up already. You know what, if, if there's something that's not much of, all you need to do is place the order. You can check out your cart, put a note on the bottom, please hold till Friday and we'll combine your post. We'll cover you either way. But also with Australia Post at the moment, you know, it, it's taking so long anyway. I'd love you to put stuff in your cart if you want something and just hold on if I tell you there's lots of it until Friday. It might be a special that's only for this week, but wait. Um, someone asked me about... I did reply. Someone asked me about the the long, the polygon... EPP papers, English paper pe piecing papers, they have gone up this afternoon and do I have a pack of them in front of me? No I don't, but someone in the house will hear me and they will just magically, magically produce a pack for me to show you. Uh, I have put them up and we've put them up post free. So that means if that's the only thing you want, the postage is included and you will just get it sent in the mail in an envelope because they're only little. But if you order other stuff, well, it will just go in and you'll pay post on everything else and it, it, you know, it doesn't add to the cost. So we'll find you a pack of those in a minute. Let me write that down. Uh, so first off, yes, we're going to start getting ready for Christmas. We, I've done the maths. I've had a look at the emails from Australia Post. <laughs> uh, thanks, Marilyn. Uh, had a look at the emails from Australia Post. They're pretty much saying that week that we have our Christmas function... See, it just appears like that. Uh, we have our Christmas function week. That's pretty much it. That is when we're going to go finished after that last show on the, oh, it's mum and dad's wedding anniversary. Don't let me forget that. The last day of the show, 28th of November. That's it. If you want it in time for Christmas, honestly, let's get it all done by then. Then through December, I'm going to do a few things with you, but they're mostly going to be um, things that you can download yourself and projects to do over summer. So we're going to start gearing up this week to get ready. Now with that, do you know what I'm going to do now? Well, it's Felicity time. Just, I talked about it previously, but we have to do it. Uh, with the Christmas decoration challenge, I spoke about judging prizes and I thought, that's not really right, is it? It's Christmas. Let's let's not let's not make it um, political or, or or you know or miss out. Can you imagine not winning something at Christmas? It'd be terrible. So no, no, I've changed it. Everyone, everyone that sends me a Christmas decoration to show during the Christmas week is going to get a prize. I'm going to do up a beautiful little Christmas package for everybody. So you'll send your decoration to me. And I'm going to send it back to you with a Christmas present from the Chandler's Cottage family. How's that? Then everyone gets something. And that you know when you send it in, it's going to come back with something yummy 
for you, not to give away for you. I think that's better, don't you? That's nice. Then there's no stress. So, um, hey, what, what? Oh, really? Now, hang on. You're 51 years this year, Marilyn, for your anniversary. Ooh, 51. Miss, sorry, not Marilyn, Jane. Marilyn Foster's on underneath you. <laughs> um, you're 51 years. So which year are you? Mum and Dad are 61. Oh, you're, ne you're just nearly the same as Mum and Dad. You got married really young too then, didn't you? All right, so Felicity, do you remember? She sent us the fabric mulch. Oh, it's raining fabric fibre now. Uh, so I've brought in my pot, my red pot to show you. And if you know, I've got how many cameras here and I can't line it up with one. Shall I do the overhead one first? Let's just, uh, heavens, you imagine I have had to keep this basket out of paws reach from Miss Ginny. Here we go. So Marilyn, uh, far out, Felicity, Felicity sent me fabric mulch. Everyone needs fabric mulch to brighten up their day. Here we go, here we go. So, look at it. So all her little leftover bits that can't be used for anything, she saves them and uses them for all her pot plants. So I'm thinking if you, you know, start, if you've got all your Christmas uh, quilts happening and you've got reds and golds and greens, save them. I've got to be missing a camera. There's got to be a camera. There we go. That's better. There you go. Save them all up. And then, okay, local hardware store. For most of us, it's Bunnings. You'll be allowed back in there in most places soon. You know, those little $2.50, little flower, you know, the, the, the flower pots that they do with pansies. And they'll have red pansies in. And you could just save it all up. And I know it's only a little cheap and cheerful gift, but how cute's that? I think that's great. So I've got mine on now. That's staying on there. I'm not taking mine off. That's staying on. Oh, but you could also... There's another bit in here. Some of, One of the pockets that she sent is uh, blue. So I think that sort of that would go around one of those little pots of violas or something, wouldn't it? That's so cute. Ooh, there's some Melba. Heavens, Felicity. It's uh, <laughs> no offence, but I'll do my pots and then it might go on the veggies because there's heaps of it here. Absolutely heaps. All right, so that's remember that that is one thing. This is this is pure good. Oh. <coughs> Got the fiber in my throat now. Um, recycling, upcycling, reusing, zero waste, all of that. Okay, these are what we spoke about the other day, just briefly. These are our new little packs of the long octagons. Now, I'm going to chill soon, and I'm going to <laughs> chill, just slow down a bit. I'm going to sit and do a couple with you, because I showed them to you, and we were supposed to be doing them. Well, I, I've got them cut out down the other end on the dining table. Uh, fussy cut with Melba. But shall we just shall we just do a couple today and see how they come up? What I have done for today as well, uh, or until Friday. Okay, so originally, I'm not quite sure what happened. There was supposed to be 25 in the pack, and we had a whole heap of them packed off. And when I counted them, there was, there was about 20 packs of them. Um, they've got 30 in the pack, so... I said to Steve, okay, let, let's just leave that and as a special Facebook offer, you'll get the pack that says a 25, 25, <coughs> but they've got 30 in them. So this is the design on the front. This is me sculling water. <coughs> um, it takes 24 that little design there uh, and it is I will do them sort of like a paper doily club cushion project as well but 24 and you've got 30 in the pack so I think that shapes really good and then I said to Cass you think up some other cool things to put on the back of the pattern so she did so there's just four of them together and you can use them in a row as a 
as a nice little border or something as well. And then she's layered up two sets of four to make a cool little flower. I do like that. That's pretty cool. So I think we'll, we'll do a few of these today. Nancy Cook. Grandkids. I thought they'd all gone back to school. Or are they little, little ones? They're baby, 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 babysitting ones. All right, see, oops, we've written 30 on the back. So we know which ones for the Facebook special. So again, we have, we have lots. I don't think we're going to run out. So you can pop those in your cart, and I'll leave that as that free post 30 instead of 25 until the Friday show. <coughs> Felicity. <coughs> Uh, Flick also said really good for stopping your pot plants getting dry and that is right and um, I think I might need to water that one in <sighs> but these last well don't they I haven't managed to kill that one I don't usually kill plants but it has survived inside and outside and that's doing quite well the red pot's a bit full on though Christmas only um, now charm these are our charm packs um, I have not had these up since we went to the new website and we are just in the process of putting them back in stock now um, Steve will be popping these up this afternoon so you'll be able to grab them I need to put in the description for you though I, I want to list them separately I you know I can either put it up just as the charm pack or I can put it up as the kit what I've decided to do because the pattern comes inside here to make this quilt. I'm going to put it in pre-cuts, but in the description, it will give you the link and the quantity you need to also order of the border. So you need one of these packs, and then for the sashing and the border, you need 1.5 meters. So it's sold in one in half meter increments, so you'll grab this pack and a meter and a half. So we've got it in both colorways going up. So there's this one, I'll grab the other one. Um, the pack's got written on the back what you need for the backing and the batting. Whether you want to add that now, we do need to add batting to the website. Because I know what happens over Christmas, you finish off quilts and you want the batting. So we've got to get that. Sometimes I say I'll put that up, but it's not that straightforward. It's first of all securing enough supply and then getting it delivered and putting it up and doing the weight. Um, so I need to do that. Sometimes the suppliers don't have what we want in and we have to wait. So um, we will get bashing up though <coughs> for you pronto. That's the other colorway. Both of these, look, I, I wouldn't say we've got endless stock because they both contain um, flannel flowers that we're not doing anymore. So they, there is a limit. It, it's still, we can probably do about 30 packs, but then, then we're done. And I'll, I'll have to change them. Um, and the very, very out of print grey tea tree seed pod that's in this one, uh, Lisa King cut before we moved every single last bit of that down into the squares for these so when they're gone they're gone they're gone but um they'll be new now the other thing too emma's popping past uh to do a pickup the contactless pickup in the house tomorrow night because we've got the new teal and pink border stripe coming we will be doing this in the spring colors as well so she'll be making up um, all of these bits with the piece blocks and then we'll wait for the border to come in and we will put them up as well as a new pack uh, ready to go so you'll be able to order your spring pack now and get it delivered but you'll be able to pre-order that border stripe as well I will wait until it's on the water on the water before I actually put it up for pre-ordering. And the way that pre-ordering will work is that you'll be able to, you'll order it and you will pay for it at that point, but at a pre-order price. So it will be cheaper for you. And then the second it arrives, it'll come straight up. Did you like that? You might have to make that free post too. It's less complicated. All right, so that's the other one. So you've got all of the, you've got eight, uh, no, eight fabrics, 
seven and a half inch squares and five of each. So you've got 40 squares. I mean, you don't have to use them for the quilt. Um, Charming Australia, if it's not already up, I've just, up, I've just checked with Cass. If it's not, she is going to put up the pattern for this on A Quilter's Life. So it will be a free pattern for um, Quilter's Life membership as well. Right, where will we go? Oh, yes. Just, well, I, we're doing. We're just going to have a little bit of a play with some lamps and stuff today, um, and we'll do the paper piecing, and then oh yeah, there's stacks of stuff here. But I want to show you this. Uh, overhead, overhead. Okay, so this is the other stuff that goes on in between when I see you. Um, I would love you to think that I'm sitting sewing every day when I'm not with you. No, it doesn't work like that. I wish it did. But this is also the other stuff that takes up so much time. This is choosing new fabrics for next year. So I just I just wanted to show you just a um, just a little thing. Who said what where I'll pop that on the list. <laughs> Thanks, Cass. I just want to show you this. So these are Figo fabrics that are coming in next year. So this catalog, this is how far ahead we work. This is the this is the flash catalog that we get if you're very lucky from one of your favorite favorite Australian distributors just in case he's watching. Um and so this is spring 2021, but this is an our spring. This was the this is US spring. So this was actually brought out in May and then it comes into us after that. So it's a very long process. But these are rather gorgeous and I wanted to show you what I ordered for us, you and me. I ordered this range. And it is really, really unusual. This is going to take us into funky quilt set territory. So this might be the funky the funky quilter club maybe funky fabric club but it's called Figo and it is a bijou but these see they're all bright and they're a little bit geometric but this is metallic this is gold in here so I had to have it uh, and then in the book they're, they're beautiful magazines that they publish let me show you this they they give you all these projects um, that are available from designers or they're free downloads from the company but they're rather they're rather lovely look they're even doing clothing with it oh I did cut that top out I showed you last week by the way it's it's ready to hit the overlocker I did cut it out see they've got bags and then goes on to other stuff this is not me but it could be in another life all right so I've ordered these for us so these come in Hang on, it'll be on the secret squirrel piece of paper. Oh, there it is. Shipping, November. So that means for us this will be in early next year. So that's a bit exciting. They're sort of, it's sort of cerisey plum and pinky red. They're all just a little bit outside of primary colour and I like those. So stay tuned for those. Um, Steve will have them already to run on the website again as soon as we know they're imminent. We will open them up for ordering. Oh, oh, oh. Now, can you see those okay? I'll do close the picture. This freaked me out and I, oh, I had to have it. I just, it was the most amazing thing. I think it almost takes me back to sort of history collaging. Um, I'll turn it around. Look at these. Look, that is a fabric, okay? It is a fabric. Look, there's just so much detail. It's like a find, it's like a find the, it's like a find the thing, isn't it? Where you have to go find things, find the orange, find the flower. There's thought, there's everything in them. So, I'm going, these, we're having these. I'm thinking bags. They've chopped it all up. They've chopped it onto little pieces, but... I think I'm going to go with, this will be big stuff for us, or well, for me. I think they're stunning. Oh, I have to show you this too. This is what I have to do, well, have to do, this is what I do for the textile pantry and what other companies do. So when you send out these brochures, I think you can just see that. 
So for all of the projects that are in here, you, they give you breakdowns of how many bolts you need or yardage of each one. So that if you go, I'm going to buy that fabric and I'm going to do that kit, it shows you how many bolts you need to buy. And I'm talking big stuff, so you need to buy uh, seven bolts or like big stuff, like the big American shops. It's all in there. Anyway. So I've ordered those for us. They'll be early next year, but this takes time, you know, six, nine months ahead. Right, now, um, had a little bit of a, yeah, like a steam pump thing flick. That's what it is. Thank you. That's what it is. Um, heading towards Christmas, home, giving the place a spruce up. I thought it might be just the appropriate time to come back and visit lampshades. I know, it's not what we're supposed to do on a Tuesday, but I can, until I can get M back in here and we can get back in a routine, I think it's just whatever we like any day, really. So, I have a limited number of these large lampshades I was able to get hold of. So you can see I've got it here. Now, a little bit of that under the Australian sun, and then I've got it in the green flannel flowers. If you get into these, you'll have a lot of fun. But also, um, sometimes you're better off with big shades to go into. What am I trying to say? If you don't want really, really strong light bulbs inside, go for a lighter color. But if you go for darker colors for your lampshades, pump it up with some strong LED or something inside. So I've got some of these um, that I got hold of. It's a bit hit and miss. A bit hit and miss. We were able to get some more of these. Now, I only had a couple more in stock, and I grabbed some more. So, do you remember we did these earlier on? Hey, I didn't stuck, stick down that side very well, did I? Operator error. That will be operator error. Okay, so they're the lovely little lanterns, and remember, these come with the little bits of plastic disc that you put inside to hold your little battery operated tea candles in. Again, get a line to somewhere like J Car or something or Bunnings and buy the really strong LED one so they really, really shine bright. Then, um, <clears throat> to get you into the spirit of Christmas, the kits that we do have available, I'll open this up and show you. I've made them Christmassy for you. So we we'd finished with all of the Indian ones uh, and we hadn't cut any more on the cream on cream to go in. And I said to Steve, let's just switch it over. Let's make it Christmas. So the kits that were popping out, that the price of the kit gives you everything you need to make three lanterns like the ones I showed you. And I've added in for for free, for none other, for extra, for whatever you want to call it. These are three gorgeous fabrics from Robert Kaufman. These were Imperial Collections. And I just think they are just perfect to make up as a story of three. So you would do the red and the green and then pop this one with both colours in the middle if you had all three on your Christmas table. So you've got a fat eighth of each of these. So that's a fair whack extra to pop in for you. Please don't make me do the maths. I can do it. $9.75 value of fabric in there. And I think they'll be really good. Now you will have a little bit extra left over because this is the size that you need. So it's only going to take up that much. So this bit here that's why I'm going to have a play with the English paper piecing, those long ones, these new long ones, with that. Just just for fun today. So, because I'm confidently going to make my set up. <laughs> well, definitely. Eagerly, not confidently. Eagerly going to make mine up. Cheryl, you're late. We've all been talking about you. <laughs> just... Again, with the apologies for being late. <laughs> All right, so that, that's for a minute's time. We'll do that. Then we've also got some cool new ones. That's for English paper piecing. I'll pop that there. Do you like the, uh, the wild hair today? I'd love to tell you that that was done on purpose. 
uh, just to give you a different look. No, no, I was still chatting with Kay from Scott Street at 20 to 2 on the phone. Without a shower, let's not go there. Okay, so this one is super different. Again, this is lampshade. Oh, but look at the shape. So I'm, I'm going to make up mine today in this. And the reason is, if you all remember, and um, Jane Warren, I hope you're keeping notes. You'll be keeping notes, a few others will, of what I have not finished. Flashback to early September, the tea cosy with the pocket is not done. So I'm going to get this done before Friday. Also because I've got in double-sided adhesive, double-sided adhesive rubber foam batting. So single-sided, we usually have for bags, not at the moment. We're all sewing at the moment. But for placements and things like this, I think double-sided adhesive is the go. Because uh, it will stick to both sides and then you can quilt if you want to or not. So I'm going to get that up on the website. I'm going to use it for this and I'm going to finish it. But you can see what I'm doing is that I want to create... Where the... Oh, I must have left the other one outside, the black one. I want, I want to get back to creating really lovely scenes to put on Facebook and for newsletters and things. So I just love the idea. <laughs> Never. No, you've got a lot of UFOs too, Jane. I, I just want to get back to being able to do, I suppose for me, really pretty little scenes to pop up in newsletters and Facebook and things. As I was saying, so I'm going to make my tea cozy out of this, and then I'm going to do my lampshade out of this, and then we might add a few little extra bits and pieces in a little, you know, handmade bowl or something like that, all with these colours just to do a really pretty little, do a pretty little um, photo. When we set a little scene, do you remember how we played with the Eileen Campbell um, 3D flower technique in our hoops last week? Originally, I was going to do these with little, my little Suffolk Puff cherry blossom technique, but I think I'm going to do Eileen's method to do these little teeny flowers so that I get a really nice, fine, tiny little flowers on here. So um, that is why I am going to do my lantern today out of this one. And I think it will look okay on that base. I think that'll be all right. I might need to get another one. The good, the good thing about doing these is uh, you can buy a lot of lamp bases online from Beacon Lighting, from Bunnings. There'll be lots that you can get a sent out mail order if you are in a remote area. Good afternoon, Eileen Campbell. Oh, she's here and I'm talking about her. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's that one and Steve's popped those up. I mean... Just getting the box alone to put all your applique blocks in is... No, I'm joking. It's kind of worth it. All right. So, I'm going to do this one. Oh, okay. What, one more thing. One more thing. Can you... You can just see them over here on the side. I went through today and pulled all of the gold fabrics that we have, thinking about Christmas coming up on top of the ones that are already in our um, yellow gold essential applique pack. So I pulled a whole heap of different ones to show you as well. I'll show you after the lamp and I've just remembered. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Oh, he's gone. I need to get Steve, I need to tell uh, Steve that I did another 10 packs to put up because there was only one left online so there's another 10 of those so we don't so we don't run out all right let's do this oh, I get nervous when we do things together and I haven't done it before okay it can't be it just can't be any different really can it to doing the lanterns but look at the flash instructions that you get it's pretty good pretty good okay it's gonna be the same so what we need to do first that all goes there, that goes there. First thing we need to do is unpack this. It's a really lovely shape, and I think it's a great shape for uh, bedside tables because 
I mean, that's premium real estate. Absolutely premium real estate. And to have uh, one that sits sort of flatter and will sit back near the wall is got to be good. I suppose if I'm going to use them, do two and use them for my bedside table after I've done the, done the photo shot, um, I'm going to need to make just a couple of nice little fabric coasters and things as well to go with them. The one, it's interesting, see this gold in here, this is true metallic gold, whereas all the ones I've sort of pulled out to show you today are Christmas gold, but except for this one, this is, um, this will be under Other Gorgeous Fabrics Canvas Studio, see that, that is just true metallic, that's what we use in the Jade Chinatown tote with the Jade Dragons, yeah. So it says, it says to cut a piece, big enough for that, so I'm going to go probably about there with a rotary cutter. Shall I freestyle it? I'll do the party trick. There we go. Actually, <laughs> those um, essential applique packs, I didn't, I did kind of laugh at someone's expense the other day, but I don't know if I was embarrassed or what it was. Someone very kindly wrote to me and said, Lisa, I've got one of your beautiful applique packs, heavens, I can't remember who it was now, um, your beautiful applique packs. There were a few little frayed bits on the side, I think need to speak to the company making them because I think their blade is their blade is blunt and I just went oh my goodness I just felt so bad because it's me it's my blade that's blunt we do them in the house we don't yeah we <laughs> don't buy them in it's me cutting them so I sort of had to write back and said thank you but it's just me I was probably getting a bit tired Alright, so we can see that this, it's huge, isn't it? My goodness. So, it's going to go, you can see why though, it's going to go right round to that end. So it's going to go round there, up there, round there, and down here. Heavens, huge. Okay. So once you've got a piece that's about the right size, it is going to be exactly the same as the lanterns, isn't it, girls? To there. Then we have to do the big peel. So I might just pop this one down on the ground. And just pop this down. Just pop this down. Um, I'm trying to decide at the moment as well if the Christmas decoration extravaganza, as we should probably call it now rather than a challenge, yeah, we'll call it extravaganza. Emporium. Oh, Emporium's a good word. Um, whether it justifies buying another Christmas tree. I don't know. I think we might need two. And I know Rob's watching. We might need two. Uh, because I've got the big white one, the huge Christmas stuff, that's to talk about. The huge white one that I bought for the Melba launch, what, six, seven years ago. Massive thing. And it's white. I got white because I wanted it to work with all the pink and the grey and the silver. But I think we might need a dark one as well, depending on what decorations people send in. We might need a bit more contrast. Alright, so what it says to do, heavens, this is almost need an assistant. It's just it's just very curly. It's come all the way from uh, England somewhere, these kits. Alright. Alright, you know what I'll do. You know if I make a beach botch of it. I will just delete the Facebook session and there is a little bit of a crease there but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, we need to peel that back 
so this is going to come off. Now we flip it, and I need something that was strong down the other end to sit on it. Maybe my glass. There we go. I can hear a cat outside the door. The cat would work. Oh, who said what? Who had a better idea? Wait, 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 wait. Yes, yeah, or even three. Oh, you can send as many as you like, Sharon. Oh, three Christmas trees. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, three Christmas trees. All right, ready? Ready, ready, ready. We're going to put this down. That is going to stick. Now, what is now going to happen is, of course, it's going to start to curl. As I go. So what you do at this point is that you just slowly peel Actually, it's good if I practice on my two first. Well not practice but you know have a go because Steve wants a blue one for Christmas. Well he requested a blue one. I'm inclined to say that he could make his own but, you know, the kid's a whiz with a Dremel, so I think he'd manage this okay. Pull this down a bit further. There we go. This is pretty straightforward, isn't it? Do you remember what I did with the uh, with this one? Remember what I did with that? So I actually got the scalpel out. And I cut, so you can see it there, I cut away partial bits of the leaves so that the light shined through. So when, just don't forget that little trick if you are going to make one up. If you choose a fabric, uh, or indeed one of the gum leaves, you can do that with the bigger ones as well. Or with this fabric, I suppose a little bit like the tea cosy that I'm doing. You could actually add some extra flowers on. I'm still, every time I do this, I keep forgetting that I really, really want to do one with my butterfly fabric and cut the wings, partially cut the wings. Nearly there. I hope you all haven't got your reading glasses on and you can see my nails. I always apologize for them, but really, someone needs to send me an abusive email saying, Lisa Chandler. Will you please clean your nails if you've been in the vegetable garden again before you do another show? There we are. It's on. It is on. All right. Next step. We need to trim this back. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. Trim this back so that it is exactly... The same size. Now we can do this with scissors. Uh, it I don't know about the rotary cutter. I just oh yeah, we're going to be here forever. Be just look. Do me a favour. Be really, really careful. Just be careful because this is going to slip and slide. If you've got one of these true uh, these grippy creative grid grip, use that because you don't want that slipping on you. And I'd hate, I'd hate you to wreck it. There we go. So we just push this down a little bit more. You see that white tub there? I'm not quite sure why, but it, when I first got to it this morning, it had a zip and five pairs of scissors in it and three rotary cutters. It's just one of those little magical anomalies that happens here. And I wonder why I can't find one. Okay. Now remember, be, just stick with your normal basic uh, safety safety rules. Don't cut sideways and don't cut towards. You always cut away, particularly with something like this that's curly and it is taking on a life of its own. Would you go around that way? And did you see this? This is um, look at that. the most beautiful, deep, gorgeous salmon pink Northcote. 
um, shimmer. Just there's two shades. There's a light and dark. They go with this fabric perfectly. So that's actually sitting here to do those little flowers uh, on the tea cozy, and I'll probably bind. I'll probably bind the base of the tea cozy in it as well. Oh, also, if you're thinking Christmas and you're on the website, don't buy the red solid. Don't buy it, don't buy it. I'm going to mark it down for you. Um, um, Steve, if you're still watching, he may not be now, uh, but if you're still watching, can you please mark that red? I think it's 15 a metre. Can you please mark that down to 11? It's the uh, Clockworks American Made one because I bought that big bolt purely so that we could have it for Christmas so let's uh, let's make that a little bit a little bit better because I think if you're doing a lot of Christmas things even if you use it for lining tea cozies or uh, Christmas stockings or something like that all right done I'm done I'm done and then it says smooth out you yeah, we've done all of that and we've done that we've done that oh carefully snap the creased edges it's called a kiss cut. I'm not going to argue with them. It's a kiss cut. So do you remember this bit? Along the edges, same as the lanterns, there is a little perforated ledge there already. So we're going to peel all that off. I don't understand down the other end though. What do you do down the other end? Let's sit to one side of the paper. Oh yeah. Alright, you ready? So if I pop this over here, I'll show you. So on the edges here, see that? It actually folds back. Now, this, I've obviously manipulated this enough. It hasn't done the cute little click thing. Sometimes it snaps and clicks. Wynn, are you both here? Oh yes, Diane, congratulations on your first grandchild. Heavens, it was like yesterday you were holding Philip and Stephen in your arms. Okay, come on. There we go. Alright, so now this peels off. So when I take this off, it, it's not sticky on the fabric, all right? The fabric will be doesn't need to be sticky. I just wanted to say that in case you get a bit confused, like when we do Liza Fix or Steamer Seam, we will be putting sticky onto the lamp hoop when we do it. We do have, uh, uh, these are a limited number, we can't get, should say that. Stick it in your cart and, and check out and put a note if you'd like us to wait, if you want one. Um, these, I grabbed from the UK direct, not from our local supplier and he hasn't got any. So, uh, so that's all off. Now we need to put some of our double sided tape down one side. So let's do this end and you get one of these which is your double sided tape. There. Oh. Okay, so it's red. You, you don't need it all and you will find a million uses for this once you've done your lantern. So I'll pop this down here and we need to run a whole line of this down this edge. I actually like mine to go up a little bit onto the fabric as well. Okay, so that's on there. I hope you're all sewing. Up, oh, Jane! Did you use this stuff instead of the double-sided clover tape? Well, that was very innovative of you. Very innovative. 
Um, save this up for your Christmas cards too. I am definitely, I am, and I wrote this in a post on A Quilter's Life today, I am making my Christmas cards again this year. Probably for the first 10 years that Rob and I were married, it was my thing. Uh, you know, and then there were children kind of got in the way and then there was, well, Chandler's Cottage. Uh, so I am definitely, definitely going to make cards again this year because I just think if any year it was a good year to get something pretty in the mail that someone had handmade, Christmas cards, yeah. So the leftover of this is going to be perfect uh, for cards and mounting things and stuff on them. Okay, so that's on. Now we need to add it onto our frame. And... Uh, what we why hold the frames together ah oh. what you have to do is hold the frames together and mark them so that you start in exactly the same place when you add on the shade however you don't really need to with these you can just see where the join in the wire is, so I'm going to use that as my guide of where I started all. all. Right, so we need to add this one. Hold frames together with the pencil and apply double-sided tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a bit of that do as I say, not as I do thing, but in reverse. Uh, what else did I need to... Oh, so the first... Uh, the first month's pack for our newest applique club members is in the mail. If you don't have it already, it's on its way. Um, when we did all of the packs up, we did end up with uh, some spares because some lovely people got a bit worried that they they their, their details were not recorded or that they had forgotten to do it or something. So we had some people who had signed up twice. So that meant that we hadn't been charged twice, but made up twice. So we've actually ended up with three spare packs. So if you are going, oh, wish I had, I've got three if someone else would like to start now. Um, just You would just email me at info at Chandler's Cottage or ring me after the show. But I've got three. If, if no one wants them, that's fine. I will keep them there. We always keep at least one for the f each time round because, you know, things, things can go astray. Things can be delivered to the wrong people. All of that, particularly on the first round, we like to make sure that they've got there safely and with all intentions, the addresses are correct, all that sort of stuff. So, um, but yeah, if you would, we ended up with three spares. So, and it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of, some of it's quite precious because we're not reprinting that fabric or I haven't gotten more at the moment. So uh, we will leave those packs together for a little while anyway. There we go. So that's the first one done. You actually just pop the tape on the outside and you push it around so that it's going right round the rod or the frame I should say so that's all on um just thinking out loud if you had if you after you've done one of these if you've got an old frame that needs a new lease of life why not why not pull it apart and uh, and have a go. I don't. What would we use? Would we use contact? You've got to be able to buy something like this, surely, to make your lampshades. I'm sure some of you know more than me. I have got the most insane, the most insane photo that I must put up to on Facebook. It's come from Spain. Uh, one of our shops in Spain. A lady has made the most in incredible multi. Uh, um, multi multi panelled lampshade with Melba fussy cut down the one that we're reprinting it's just gorgeous so I will pop a photo up in Spain pretty exciting 
Spain were always really good supporters uh, of under the Australian sun as well. Um, the first time round with Robert Kaufman, we had raincoats or shower rain shower coats made laminated and made in Rome with it. Just went everywhere. It was quite daunting. In fact, I never ended up with the raincoat. That was really disappointing. There we go. Nearly there. Oh, I just hope you're all sewing while I'm doing this. Don't waste a second. Or cooking. Something like that. Deb Burt, you are watching and I have a question for you. Uh, I think I can answer it properly anyway, but I might as well ask you. Um, Therese was asking me in an email and I have to get back to her. Therese was asking, what do you think is the best foot for a 9mm machine? Because we were talking about them on Saturday. I think she's got a 20D. I think a 34D. <laughs> Ask away. A 34D. Tell me what you use on yours because you've got a 9mm machine. I can put a 23 on, but I was thinking a 34 clear foot. Um, but yeah, we were just talking about what's what are the options because there's a lot of options there. You know, there's so many different feet. But I I think I think that we're doing free motion feet on uh, Saturday, so that's going to be fun. And I need to double check on stock of feet before Saturday because poor Benina are really really low on feet at the moment. Accessories due to shipments and stuff coming out of Europe. So. Uh, Oh, for your seams, yes, absolutely. But this is like appliquing down, um, you know, petals and things. So not with the guide, just for appliquing down petals. All right, we're on. Now what we do is pull. I'm just pulling off the tape. So Sorry, the cover of the tape. So the cover of the tape is that pale salmony pink colour. Fiona, that is, you get brownie points for that comment. What are you doing Jenny? Sewing the borders on an EPP I spy quilt. Oh, wonderful. Here we go. So this is super sticky. I always get to this point and go, now what do I do? Look, what? Um, <laughs> hang on, I'm going to hang it there with our Christmas stockings. Um, don't, don't forget, Christmas stockings, free download pattern. Grab, 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 um, free, in free patterns on the website. Um, stick your EPP on your cuffs up the top. Ooh. So everyone... Notice, don't do it again. There's no, there's no glasses. Kay's got a lot to answer for. The door's opening. Who's that for? Ah, oh, did she just order them? Yeah. So she's watching. There you go. Is it from Sorry. From yeah. Inside. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So now Therese is watching. So um, she knows I'm. I've called a friend on the foot. Right, that one's done. So we're ready for the big bit. Oh no. Apply, yeah, yeah, press tape down, done that, release, done all of that. Page two. <gasps> this is it. This is where we, this is it. It's the big bit. Okay. In the diagram, may I just point out, oh, that was a bit of a cockney accent, sorry. May I just point out that uh, it's laying flat on the table. It is not curling up on itself. In my defence, if I look a little bit awkward, Right, this is the end that does not have my bit of double-sided tape on it. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not nervous. 
So we have to stand this up and we need to stand this up. Oh, wrong way, Lisa. We need to stand this up so that where that join is on this short side is going to sit right, 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 right on the edge. Not on, sorry, not on the PVC paper, right next to it on the fabric. And then I'll grab the other one. Whose idea was this? And this one. Ah! Right. Let's just put that up against the girls and then I'll you know, put this here. All of you will have someone that I'm sure will stand here and happily. There we go. We're on. Okay. Now. I'm just going to hold these. I, I said to myself, I, I can do this on Facebook. Natasha did this. She did the bigger one with Melba border stripe, which looked absolutely gorgeous. And um, I had a little bit of lampshade envy there. So, but I need to get the bigger lampshade. I thought about doing it with Melba today for you. But uh, it's it's sort of not big enough. The Waratahs here, but you don't get the whole pattern. Deb says, "Me thinks you need another set of hands." I do. Never mind that, Deb. I think uh, I think we need to. Oh, sorry. Great edge stitch. Yeah, twelve D. You're right. We will um we will have a we'll have a go. Merle's making a coin purse. Oh, Angie. Buddy Chum Pal, what happened to us having a drink? I know what happened. It's called lockdown. You and me, Morty Wine Bar. Soon. Soon. Uh, definitely. I'm off the alcohol at the moment, but uh, give me the Morty Alec Wine Bar open. And I might need to um, change that. <laughs> All right. Nearly there. So just go slow. You, you you sort of you don't need to um, worry once you get that first line up because it is so sticky. It will keep going. It will keep going pretty straight. You don't need to worry too much about it. There we go. And we're up to this last little bit. Whoa. So this is where that bit of double-sided tape comes into play because it's going to Lorraine Finland that's a great idea but I hope that you use your dumbbells for you know other things as well I was standing in the kitchen yesterday doing my um, my elbow curls a la healthy quilter from quilters life <laughs> what I tell the girls uh, you know, I need to practice what I preach sometimes. And I was standing there with two cans of kidney beans doing my elbow curls. And Ginny, Ginny comes up over onto the windowsill and just gives me that, what are you doing? I think she would have got really upset if they were cans of whiskers. Okay, there we go. That's on and in. Super. So now what happens is you actually lay it down on its side. And you do this little thing where you curl this up and over so that it and it will stay over because again you've wrapped that double-sided tape right round You're impressed with what, Deb? My ability to pull off a lampshade, probably. Oh, no, with my curls. Yeah, well, it's got to it's happen. It's just got to happen. Okay, so you're going to do this all the way around. And then you get these nifty little things. that looks like a Dorito or a CC um, that's been attacked with a pair of pinking shears, pretty much. And you use that to push that raw edge up and under. 
that far. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, you'll want to take your time to do this and I also find the true and tried, I haven't got one here, the true and tried orange stick that we use so much for our um, applique now, this is one of the metal clips off my, we use on the fabric, is also great. Just get your orange stick and tuck it up underneath. So if I hold that up, you can see you can get the whole, the whole piece up and under around that bit. I'll stick to this other bit for now. Sometimes you will hear it click. Uh, don't worry about that. That is literally, that's actually good when it clicks because it means you've got it right up underneath. I'm going to do the speedy job on this because I want you to see the finished effect of it sitting on the lampshade. It's all about, it's all about the effect. Pop that under here. Um, yes, yeah, so just going back this 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 uh, Saturday. Oh, oh, thank you, Deb. This Saturday, um, our third banana already. And do remember, if you don't have a banana, there's still a lot of tits and bits and bobs that are worth. Would you hear that? That was a little click. Um, bits and bobs that you might find handy, or it it's a good little incentive to get you back onto your own machine and your manual and check out the features of your machine, whatever that machine may be. So this week is everything that we do with our feed dogs off. So we'll be doing a little bit of free motion quilting, obviously. Um, we'll be getting the embroidery darning foot out as well and just looking at how they do differ from the standard darning foot. So we'll be doing that, and if you have a banana with a BSR, or you're interested in a BSR, it's a good day to watch. Actually, let me, um, the magic, the magic of technology, let's just put, let's just put those darning feet on special. Hang on. Can you put the number, can you take 10% off number nine feet, please? Ta. I just sprung someone with a mouthful of chips. <laughs> so I'm just taking 10% off the number 9 darning feet. So just, just doing it now because it will happen Saturday. Uh, and if you want to get your hands on one so you've got one before um, Saturday's get together so you can do it at the same time as me, just put a note on the order and that will go out this afternoon. I love the technology. You'll love it, don't you? This is looking pretty cool. I'm just, I'm just quickly doing this. I will go back and do it a lot neater later. Ew. You know how when you um, go and buy a pair of shoes and then you have to go and buy an entire new wardrobe to go with the shoes? That's how I'm feeling about the lampshade. <laughs> Two new lampshades I'm going to need. Like a new quilt, a doona cover, pillow slips, the whole bit. So, uh, this could hang. So if you pop this up the other end, that's, gonna, that's going to hang. Or, it's going to go up this way on a lampshade. So let's, let's take this one back up here. Um, so Steve's getting an aqua blue one. And it's going on, he's going to have like, he, it's going to, he's going to get this one, which I've had for a while, but it's that whole, you know, that lovely whole sort of teal, brownie, cork, wood look. He's going for that because he's got uh, wooden floorboards um, at his place. So we'll take this off. I am so lucky that lamp bulb was not hot. That should have been super hot and it wasn't. So this one is that big. Now they do come with the extra little insert bit. So depending on the size of your lampshade uh, ring, you can put these this on as well, which I will need to uh, click in to that rim. There we go. It's just a little groove around it so you can click it in. And then we'll pop this one over the top. 
which side I like best. I didn't fussy cut, did I? I just threw it on. With your Christmas decorations, just had a thought. They don't have to be, they don't have to hang, um, but they have to go on a tree. So if you did a miniature bunting, and I'm saying that because I'm thinking about what we're going to do on Friday, a miniature bunting, so it's more like a tinsel or a garland to put on the tree, that is fine as well. You, you could also be doing ones that clip on, you know the gorgeous little ones with the little clips? Um, there's a lot of hair clips for kids out, you know, little, the little sliding click ones. You can use those for Christmas, to, to mount Christmas decorations on, and then they will clip onto the, to the fur on the tree. I can't even know a Christmas tree. They had those flash ones on mydeal.com uh, on the weekend that have already got the LED lights on them, so you don't have to put the lights on, it just goes, it just comes on. They were very expensive. Right, there we go. Does it make a difference? Oh yeah, it does. There you go. So I'll just tidy that up a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to make another, I might make another one. But I'm kind of, what I want to do, I want to have this and then have beautiful cup and saucer and my tea cosy. So it will be the black version with this version. And then I might make up... Some little things out of the matching salmony pink north kit so that's that one and then you've also got your um oh i can leave it on what i turn it off for your sets of lanterns as well so uh and you need if you you know when you get your lantern set you'll have those three fat eights in there but of course of course you can make up your own and um with any fabrics and just pop those in your Dash. What did I do with the EPP? Oh Lord, I'll put it somewhere. He gave me one. I don't know what I did with it. No. Might have ended up down here. Or over there. Or up there somewhere. Or I don't know where I put it. You'll find it in a minute. If not, I'll go and get another one. Okay, so in the other box, B. In the other box. Oh, in the box! Thank you, Fiona. What would I do without you all? All right, we'll do these and then. Uh, that's what I'm going to tell you. Oh, so speaking of Christmas as well, don't forget. There's, there's free stuff up there already and I'm putting some more patterns up there this week. There were things that just didn't, that didn't get transferred. So what happened was we started building a new website. I have not been game enough to... Oh, okay. um, I started a new website that's not the one we ran with. So there was a lot of stuff that we started uploading to it. And then when Steve took over and turned it into the one that we have now, he thought he had everything, but not everything had gone onto this bit in the middle so I'm just finding now things that are missing but please remember there's a few things up that you can use towards Christmas now so one is the little pattern that's up there for that I did for uh, love and hugs from Australia Facebook page that little deck that is up there now so it's just it's just a little stitchery with little suffix puffs but if you wanted to start making some pretty Christmas decorations or something now you can or little blocks or pop them onto placemats or, or anything that you're doing that's there and you've got that ready to use now uh, these are missing so I don't, I don't know what happened so these are all my just the little basket now I've done you know with you I've done banner block stuff so many times on YouTube and on the show and things but if you're up late and you go oh, I can't be bothered working out how to do it myself Lisa you'll just be able to download the pattern. So I'll make sure this goes back up. And this is very important. Uh, this is really important when we come to Friday on our bunting day. So I'll make sure that goes back up. Um, projects for Christmas presents. Yeah, did a whole stack of more of tidy ups in these colours, Australian Christmas colours this week. My shoulder's going in. Uh, what else? 
Um, Cass is just setting up now. Yeah, Chinese treasure purse didn't make it across. Here you go. Oh, that's a really popular little pattern. That's because it doesn't exist on the website. So this one will be going up as a printable download. These all follow, you know, the banner block. They end up with a square base. This one has a rectangular base. It's a nice little multi-technique pattern for a friend that's just getting into bags and patchwork or to make with a little person over Christmas because you piece in 3D leaves and make your little cherry blossoms to go over the top. Um, yep, so that will be up to buy as a hard copy pattern or you can print it out yourself and make one straight away or but it will be free for members of A Quilter's Life which as you know is $10 a month so that's this month's value done. Um, I pop these up as well in pre-cuts because I'm just about to, oh that is so not the right camera. Oh Louise you're here, we've been talking about you. <laughs> we have, um, we have been talking about you and they're all congratulating you because they all know you got the, you don't even know, you got the last ever 720 in Australia at the moment. That's it, it's yours. And uh, I'll let everyone know that, and Melissa has vouched you, you have a Drop Dead Gorgeous 535. So we're going to talk about that on uh, Saturday as well. Isn't that exciting? And you did play. Well done. Okay. So I've popped these up. There's nothing private here, folks. I popped these up. So you remember we had last year a lot of beautiful silk brocade. I will confess uh, these were packed away neatly in a box and I found the box. So this is just gorgeous. Um, Indian brocade, but I'm talking really, really gorgeous woven brocade. Half meter pieces up on the website. It is normal width. It is 44 inches wide. Um, it's under $10. So if you're making a lot of our little purses up and uh, like the little charm purses and we're going to pop up the rest of the bag furniture finally this week, I've had to just make sure I've got what I need for wholesale orders uh, that I had to commit to uh, once it came in. So they're all done. But look at that, gorgeous. So it's just a nice little change. Uh, and I think a silk's really, really nice. You can see all the stock I've got there. So I've got 10, 10 half yard pieces. That's going to go with lots and lots of different colours. Anything from sort of a dark jewel blue teal colour through to gold to black, anything. It's really lovely. So, and Christmas decorations, of course. Of course. Now, this is <laughs> where I was laughing. Not, not because I've managed to create this lovely illusion that I buy in my essential applique packs when it's when it's me <laughs> cutting them at night time so this is one of the new ones and this is why i want you just you know tell us to keep your order or just have it just have it ticking along just having it ticking along until friday uh, i'm hoping one of my men is still outside because my phone's going flat and i forgot to plug it in one day I will be organised. I think what happens is I'm more organised if I'm here on my own, but when there's other people around, it doesn't happen. So these are one of our new essential applique packs. And there will be a red one as per this and a green one this week on Friday. So... I will be popping up on Facebook as soon as these are ready to go. I've just got to pack them off like this. And then by magic, here. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's not one here. I don't know what you're looking for. I don't have one. No. Oh, what? There's a cord here? The... <laughs> what cord? I don't see any cord. I know you gave me a cord. No, you took it up to the lounge room. It's connected. It's... Hey, well, I was going to give them a cord. Do you know, five minutes before the show, I'm going, what's this for? I'm going, something's not going to work. Something's not going to work because there's one spare plug. Yeah, it's... 
It's the spare for my laptop we've been looking for for a couple of weeks. So I, don't, I always had two, but they never seemed to be in the same position at the same time, so I always thought that there was one missing. All right, so that is going to be the new, the gorgeous red um, pack. But, of course, it doesn't have to be for Christmas. You might just like using red. So as soon as these are packed off, probably this evening, that photo will go up and you'll be able to uh, grab one of those, pop it in your cart, and there is an equally gorgeous green one happening as well. So then we're going to have green, we're going to have gold, which is this one. Take out, um, take that one out, Robbie. Everyone say, hi, Robbie. <laughs> oh, who said that? Fiona, yeah, yeah, you're next. I saw that. Should I plug it in? Tap. <laughs> Go away, you've got me in your ears. Rob's got his uh, Bluetooth earbuds in and I can hear myself. It's very disconcerting. There we go. All right. We're all good. We're all back. And we're not going flat. That's right. So we'll have the red one and then we've got the gold one and we're going to have the green one. So we're going to have everything that we need for Christmas. Uh, yes, you do need... <laughs> Anna, horrible. Um, you do need a, a, a blue essential pack and you need a teal essential pack. There are two that you need. And where I divide the blue from the teal is the big question. All right, so that will happen. So do you want to see? That's how I do them. This is how we do them. So we stagger them all out and then we fold something like that and pop them in your packs like that. So, yeah, I do not have... I wish I did have a little team of minions but I kind of do like it because it means that I'm the one it's nice I know you're getting it from me and that I did it it's sort of it goes both ways now just quickly golds so one two three I've got six six full-on golds that are going to be really good for Christmas Robert Kaufman fusions in coordinates because it's one that we can always get so that color is called antique this gorgeous thing is Pearl Essence um, from Maywood. Just, is it Maywood? Pearl, Pearl Essence, yeah, Maywood Studio. So this one you can see has got a luster. And they're not, both of those are not in the essential pack. Either is straight on Fairy Frost. Now in the camera you get big sort of brown, blotches it's just my lighting so when you get it it's it, it is more subtle over the whole over the whole bolt <laughs> oh very funny um i just i don't know i don't know now this is also fairy frost but can you see the difference this is like full gold this is sort of this is going more mustardy it's got a little bit more guts to it i always like the original i do i do tend to go yeah kind of if i was putting one of them with my essential pack i would go for this one which is called amber amber's really good and yours truly in gold flower and gum. That one's colour number is uh, 9 when you go through and have a look. And then there's this lovely one. Now this is P&B Textiles and this is part of that, what's it called, that Oriental range but I use it with everything. This is a Niwa. This is Niwa. Now remember we've got it in that gorgeous sort of steely slate blue that will go in the blue it will go in the blue essential pack for Fiona and friends so they're all really scrummy then I've got as well just to show you they're there um, I'm pretty sure Steve's popped them up today um, just a little few extra things that are in gold that are here so in the thread section there is a beautiful antique gold sashiko thread 
So depending on what you're doing, you know, you might just need a little bit to make um, some lovely little tassels or a little bit of stitchery on some linen, some red linen, some cream, anything like that. There is a gold in sashiko thread. And I did stock up, when we did the applique sampler month one packs, I stocked up on rich gold stranded cotton. It is full on this one. Um, it is number 783. So we've got, I mean you can see it's going to go with all those. Um, so I've got those in stock and they are up as well with a red and a green. So you've got the whole, the whole story if you need it. Do I really have to put them all back? I kind of do, don't I? back over there. I do like, see I like these spike things, it's like my own little Meccano set now. Oh, I know what's over here. Hang on, I'll grab this. Um, I think I mentioned the other week, right, so we're getting the new pink and teal printed in the border stripe for Under the Australian Sun. And I'm reprinting the black and cream because we're nearly out and Natasha needs some and I need it. And we're completely out of the black and red. But I did have stashed. What? <laughs> yeah, good on you, Joe. Oh, please, no, Joe, not yet. Not yet. I'll think about it. Another essential pack. Um, I did have stashed. I stashed about five metres in case I need it for someone that's lost fabric got star, cut something wrong, or I wanted to make a new project. Now I know it will be here <coughs> by the end of the year. And I can air freight a bit more in. I've kept what I've needed and I've popped the rest into kits. So I've got five saddle satchel kits if you wanted to grab one. Uh, so these uh, will go up this afternoon. The reason I have to, um, I haven't finished it off is we originally did these with another company's buckles and so I've taken theirs off and I'm sewing mine on that we now do. So I've got to sew those on tonight and then I can take the new uh, photo and then I've got a new photo. So the if you did want to grab one now um, to make up for someone for Christmas you'll get the photo just with the black and cream on the front it's exactly the same with your half meter of the border stripe with your black and your red lining and the buckles and the buckles of course come in this pack which also has the pattern for our satchel on the front so you're sort of getting two patterns uh, in the kit so uh, I'll put those up I may not mention those on Facebook because we've only got five of them so uh, we'll see how we go what thread to use when sewing on buckles Joan, you can use absolutely anything. Just two strands of a normal machine cotton is fine. If you've got some stranded embroidery thread, um, plain black, that's one of the main reasons I put black stranded DMC up in threads on the website so that people could use it if they wanted to for sewing stuff on. But anything, hand quilting, cotton, anything. The only thing I wouldn't use probably is a really, really sort of fine strong polyester because it's not going to show you really want something that's going to um, show up so it looks really nice you can use the contrast in color if you want to uh, so yeah entirely up to you but anything will work it doesn't have to be um, a special thread okay let's have a play yeah you hand stitch them on feet um, they come with perforated, they're all, they come with pre-perforated holes. So there's actually, you know, if I take this one off, they're really easy to sew on. You see that? I don't know if you can, but they've got holes in them. So you just sew through the holes, just back stitch. Uh, you can, look, you can put them on with a dab of glue. Um, just <laughs> don't do what M did. When we were doing all of the handles so we were making about five or six bags at once uh, the big shopping tote ones <laughs> Emma and we decided to get the glue gun out the hot glue gun out and she dab dab dabbed and she pressed and you know what happens when you put your salada together with the jam with the butter and the Vegemite and it all oozes out yeah she did that but with hot glue and her finger had little the little matching holes, or oh, I'm not laughing at her, holes on her finger in burn marks up her finger. 
not pretty. Okay, that's our little safety tip for today. So shall we have a go at these? I'll grab uh, grab these out. We'll have a quick go. I can hear Ginny outside. Hang on, I'll open the door up because I think she wants to come in. You want to come in, Jin? Here, puss. Come in if you want. All right. Now. So these are finished. They are a bit of a weird and wonderful shape. They're two and a quarter by, hang on, wrong way, two and a quarter by one and a half. That's right. So I just want to lay, just to see what it looks like, my template right over one of these little dots and fussy cut from there and I just need to make sure I've got enough right round. So just so you can see what I'm doing, you know I always say this, I use a pen but you know you're going to use a chalk pencil or a really nice uh, soft grey lid. If, if there's any of this fabric left after the lantern kits, I'll pop it up in a little pre-cut pack. Um, but I have set it aside uh, for the lanterns now. Oh, these are going to be cute. And we'll probably do these just to show you. I won't tack them. I'll do them with a glue pen. Now, remember we talked the other day about... Uh, the Perspex ones, um, and Melissa did say that a little, a little bit of a dab of water will release them. I'm actually making us something where you leave these in, and I will have it to show you for pre-ordering on uh, Friday. This is one of the things you see. There's something that comes up, and I've got to do it really early in the piece so that we have them in time because when I order them it might take three four weeks to come in and it's getting towards the pointy end uh, you could leave these corners on but uh, I'll take them off today to show you so that it looks exactly the same as Cass's fancy schmancy diagrams in the pack so this will mean that we now have three different packs. We've got our two inch octagons and we've got the five point stars as well. And uh, there's a couple more to go. Uh, who are, someone asked me the other day, it was someone, it was Yvonne or Rosemary, someone asked me the other day, if there were ones to match these, and yes, there will be, um, but that's a little combo that I'll do in a little while. Just, I've got to stop doing new things. I've got to get to the point where we get these done. I've forgotten my glue girl, glue gun, a uh, glue gun, my glue stick girls. I will just, I'm just going to get it. Talk amongst yourselves. looking well loved after what I was doing yesterday. Okay, I'm just going to pop a little bit on there just to hold it in the center. Like that. So like all of my like the like the octagon ones and you know I do the pentagon ones. Um, this is going to give you that lovely paper doily effect that I love with that cushion that I did and I do need to get another one done so you'll end up with gaps in between so you can see on here if I might be a bit hard to tell from there but if I color in the big squares 
and the little squares like that for you that is going to be the background showing through from underneath okay so so all of this around here would be uh, would be the background or the contrasting color that you've got underneath so um, this on the front here I've also set it straight on horizontal and vertical but you can I'll show you, you can set it on point as well so let's just uh, glue these over um, the other thing castle flip I did yesterday was I did all the fabric selection for the geisha Ta -da! <laughs> that we are going to do on a quilter's life so it's it's all happening when if you do use glue to do this as you go around you need to not just glue the wrong side you need to glue as you go the top side that's folded over so that you don't end up with a little uh, unstuck flaps this last bit I'll tuck that bit under and fold that up so that is that one how does it look oh oh hello look at that so all I can say in a very cheeky way for now if you grab one of the lantern packs grab yourself a pack of these as well for six dollars because you might just want to have a play or you might want to use the octagon ones uh, but the octagon ones we have at the moment don't fit onto these so please remember that I've got new ones coming that will that are being developed for the geisha so just uh, just keep that in the back of your head the, I mean, these are just perfect for this print because of the shape of the design it's just it's long so it's perfect right let's fold that over who have I missed who's uh, do you have them in purple no <laughs> rosemary no I don't have anything in purple I've only got these three uh, we do need to I, with these in mind now I will go back and have a look and certainly uh, as I mentioned the other day I am going to use this with Melba tile print that's being reprinted and um, I can see it being used with lots of other prints because if you look at the, a set of four of them if you look at everything as a set of four you could fussy cut the same bit of the print four times and sort of create different little complementary flowers to go to flowers to go together there's three one more and then we can have a play So Friday is going to be, again, even more so, very Christmassy. Uh, I will crank out the fairy lights and we'll um, get some bunting done, bunting in a few different ways I want to show you. We'll talk a little bit more about Christmas. Uh, look, the paperwork's going to be really, really simple to send in with your Christmas decoration and uh, it's really just going to be name, rank and serial number. Um, and uh, just the address to send back your decorations with your present, with your Christmas present from uh, Rob, Phil and Steve and I. Here we go. Alright. I, uh, I think it might be quite nice if I just pop my notepad over so we can sit them on white to have a look. So if you wanted a long, there we go, if you wanted to do, just do a whole cushion with, with different coloured ones, uh, you know, you could, use, you could use these two as well, or if you're doing a Christmas cushion, you know, when they're up, grab your reds and lay them over a gold or over a white and be really, really rich and decadent to, to uh, quilt it. I would just have a gold bead in the middle um, 
that would look really good. Then if we set them up as I've got them on the front of the pattern, this is the way that uh, this is the way they're going to sit. So you can imagine it's going to create this beautiful kaleidoscope effect with them. You could have those in the middle and then you could actually run a border then in the green or the red or a different colour and you can work your way out to different colours as you go. So if you have a look back at this, you could have your red, this one here, the multicoloured one in the middle and then you could run a ring, you can actually run sort of like a, a frame of red around it and then a frame of green and then out to this one again so you can go bigger again. So you could do that. Then the other thing is Casper on the back. You can put them on point or on an angle and you can actually run them um, with another layer of them underneath. So layer them up and then these become flowers. Pop your stitched or your bias stem on. It's going to look really good. And then I've, I'm a bit of a sucker for the old um, doing them in a row. And I, I just can't help thinking these or the two inch octagons. I love the idea of having them like this on an inner border. Just having them all in a row in different colours. For me this would be dual colours so I would want um, reds and teals and golds and greens. And then oh, if you wanted to do something really special with your Christmas decor, your Christmas stockings, you'd be running these around like this. Yeah. And you, look, how much Christmas fabric have you got? Let's be honest. We've all got a bit. So it, this, this is the year where we get it out and we use it. No more waiting for another, no more waiting for another year. Don't wait until we're all together. Don't wait until this or that. You at least make them up this year. Honestly, if you don't use them, if you're going to keep them and use them next year, they're not going to go off. Um, don't forget to, as I said, our, look, there's umpteen, umpteen Christmas stockings on the, on the internet. Um, this is ours. So that pattern is a free download up there, ready to go. I've made them up in my stuff, of course. But if you've got lots of leftover fabrics, then uh, just strip sew them all together, higgledy piggledy, and then lay your template out over the top. Do that for the main bulk, if you've got a lot for the main bulk of the stocking. And then, you know, bring it all together with a, with a got plain gold or red um, collar on the top. And then extra little bits you've got left over, then paper piece some hexagons, some of these, or stars, just to pop little ones up here. All my 3D flowers, or the ruching Fiona, or any of those. Lots of things that you can do. My family has never had stockings. We were not a stocking family. We were a pillowcase family. So maybe, maybe this year it'll be Christmas stockings, um, Christmas stockings all round, I think. Finish quilting, uh, Felicity, you're out of control with quilts at the moment. Um, used up all my Christmas fabric, used up, Sharon, you've used up all your Christmas fabric. I can fix that. <laughs> I can fix that. Um, yeah, look, I... There's just so much that you could be doing and in the meantime you'd really like me not to be so hypocritical and actually finish some things off myself. So that's what I'm going to do for the next two days. Um, we'll get some things finished. Angie, Angie, are there any details on the website? No, not yet. Not yet. That is what you are waiting on, Cass and I, to finish. So it was going to be a competition, um, Angie, and then I just decided that was bad karma, mate. So we're... Um, we're going to make it for everyone. I want it to be. I like the word emporium. Christmas decoration emporium. Christmas decorations from quilters all over Australia for one week in one on one tree or something like that will come up with a really cool name. And I will everyone that gets sent in will get their I don't know how many minutes of fame, but they will get their fame and they will get shown off and they uh, will get their due course and everyone will just love seeing them and it's going to be a lovely way to share inf inspiration for everyone. Uh, well, maybe we need to make, um, sorry, I'm just, I got distracted and saying, yeah, we were a pillowcase family too. 
Uh, I think we were pillowcase families if to if our mums were not sewers. Uh, my mum wasn't a sewer, so maybe that's why I did. You can fit more in a pillowcase. Let's be honest, you can fit a lot. And when you're a little person, you kind of ended up inside the pillowcase because the lollies, the smarties, and everything were at the bottom. So you had to work your way amongst the presents for the lollies down the bottom. Um, yes, so please get your thinking caps on. I will certainly try and give you a lot of ideas for Christmas presents and uh, yeah, for Christmas presents and decorations. I've got some kind of really different ideas I want to do over the next month. Some of them are sort of then they're a bit of a flashback to the 70s and 80s as well, but there's some of them I think um, are worth bringing back in this particular scenario that we are all in at the moment. Anyway, um, we are going to get cracking as that you always fire me up to get going and get things done. And this week we're meeting again for our bunting day on Friday. So that gives me two days to get things done in between. And uh, yeah, I think you're all good. You're all good. You're now all talking. I should just leave you here to talk for a while. Um, oh, Melanie, Advent calendar. How do you feel about Advent bunting? That's where I was going to take you on Friday. We were going to have Advent bunting. So, uh, and we do have a couple of good um, Advent calendar ideas. Most of mine are for grown-ups. Not so much for the kids, but we will. Oh, and I've got one of Flix quilts here as well with an idea for you to show. So we will crank out the fairy lights and get some bunting done on Friday. All right, you're all good? You're all good? Uh, it's a lovely afternoon here now, hail's gone, rain's gone, wind has settled down, so it's time to get outside, alright? Bye everyone, <laughs> bye!